Yeah, so my name is Talita Suivnon, and I'm uh, one of the urologists at the Erasmus MC Center for Complex Retroperitoneal Surgery um, with a focus on testicular cancer. And um, during the EAU, EAU from uh, this year, um, I mainly focus on the role of imaging in testicular tumors. And to give it a little bit of background or context, um, so imaging for testicular cancer can be used in different settings. First of all, we can start at the initial diagnosis. And um, secondly, we can use imaging for the surveillance of these patients, but also in the post-chemotherapy setting to detect residual disease. And one of the most important things that was uh, presented at ESCOGU um, this year by the group from uh, Robert Hoddard was uh, the trial of imaging and surveillance in uh, stage one seminoma testicular tumors. So in this study, um, what we discussed was um, that they looked at CT versus MRI and the number of um, CTs or MRIs and whether this could be safely reduced um, with an, an acceptable increase or um, of advanced relapses. So there were two groups where the patients, first of all, received CT versus MRI, and within the CT or MRI arm, they received either three or seven images images, so either by CT or by MRI. So they included 669 men um, with stage one seminomas, and of these patients, 82 uh, relapsed. And 10 out of these 82, so 12%, had, a, had an advanced relapse. So the first thing that they discussed was whether the MRI was inferior to the, um, non inferior to the CT. And based on their non-inferiority criteria, they found that the MRI is non-inferior to the CT. Secondly, they show that having three scans is non-inferior to seven scans. So they concluded that um, if it's feasible, an MRI is, ver is a very good alternative for the CT. And in this way, we can also reduce the um, toxicity on our testicular cancer patients um, and to reduce also the number of um, secondary uh, malignancies. Um, other things that they also found in the TRIS trial is um, that there is a low rate of um, advanced relapses and also after three years, uh, relapses are rare. So in the discussion, uh, what we talked about was um, I received a question if I would um, advise to use the MRI and how we would go about this in areas where the MRI is not available. So what I think is important for the future is to consider that the MRI from the trial is non-inferior to the CT. And um, most, of, most of all, when the MRI is not used, this is because of um, cost effectiveness, because of the lack of expertise um, to evaluate the MRI, and also the organizational implementation. That's very difficult. Um, but we should think about whether these reasons are good enough for us to withhold the MRI from our patients since we have the results from the TRIS trial. So in my opinion, I think it's very important that if there is a possibility to use the MRI, we should use it for our patients. And if the MRI is not available, then we should use the CT, but with less um, frequent imaging. So that was the first part that we talked about um, on imaging in testicular tumors. Secondly, we talked about um, the role of imaging, so the PET-CT in the post-chemotherapy setting. And um, I think there was a general consensus which, which has been unchanged over the past years that in case of a, a residual mass that is larger than three centimeters, um, we should use the PET-CT in case of seminomas because of the high negative predictive value. 
But in contrary, in case of non-seminomas, um, there are two landmark papers that we discussed that show that the, um, the positive predictive value of um, the PET-CT for non-seminomas is approximately 50%. Sorry, the negative predictive value is appro approximately 50%. So this means it's like flipping a coin. And um, therefore, I think the general consensus is still that there is no role for uh, PET CTs in um, the post chemotherapy setting in non seminomas. So, in the end, we had a wrap up where we um, talked about um, the future of um, imaging for testicular tumors and also specifically about the role of the PET CT for non seminomas. And some uh, latest pay, uh, manuscripts uh, showed that there might be a role for the PET CT if we have a, a look at the kinetic rate or the standard uptake value um, in non-seminomas. Because what they saw in these studies is that, um, for example, in teratomas, the kinetic rate, so the uptake of the tracer, is quicker compared to, for example, scar or necrosis. So it, this is really worthwhile investigating in future studies. And the second thing that um, I think is also important considering is um, lymphotrophic um, nanoparticle enhanced MRIs, where the nanoparticles are um, um, taken up by macrophages within the lymph nodes, lymph nodes and this increases or improve, actually improves um, imaging of the lymph nodes. And lastly, what I think is um, important for the future is radiomics in um, detection of testicular can cancer, as there have been a few um, recent studies also presented um, in abstracts where they show that um, detection of tumor versus um, normal tissue by radiomics and deep learning um, algorithms is also feasible. And also to, dis to distinguish between seminomas and non-seminomas is um, feasible by using radiomics. So I think this is also really something we should keep in mind for um, future research.